everybody welcome welcome joyous day a very joyous day i just got back from watching dune part two in theaters which was way better than i expected it to be I wasn't a huge fan of the first movie but i watched the second one because i was like curious and it turned out to be a really good movie so very happy with that and in about an hour and some change i am going to go over to a concert with one of my favorite bands it's I Don't Know How But They Found Me. It's a great band. You should check them out. Um, Sasha surprised me with tickets for those, so we're going out. But that does mean that Soapbox is going to have to move a little quickly today, so I'm going to jump right into the miscellaneous uh, fun thing. This is the Jimmy Fit Games in Taiwan. I have been working very hard on trying to expand Ninja as a sport in different countries and they have so graciously decided that the jimmy fit games which is their three stage competition is essentially sasuke um in taiwan it's going to be a qualifier for the world ninja league and they've gone through a bunch of different competitors who are showing up if you take a look here here's some of taiwan's best who earned very high marks um my boy Yu Chen right there. What a guy. What a legend. But then you also take a look over here. Oh, not that. That's just them doing obstacles. There's totally not a vertical limit in there now. A vertical limit burst in there now. The owner also posted that he bought Batarangs. Like Brett Sims Batarangs. Um, and then we got Jackie Wong from Hong Kong. Bringing in quite a few Hong Kong athletes. But then you move over. Yusuke Morimoto. He competed in 2020. He's competing back here for the first time since then. It's very, very exciting. There is a chance that, you know, he could qualify for the World Ninja League Championships now, as well as Ryohei Yamamoto. And if you guys haven't heard of this kid already, uh, I believe I've talked about him before. This kid is insanely talented. Uh, generally, in terms of what makes a ninja a ninja nowadays, uh, outside of Japan, like Lachey's, special unique obstacles tech he is by far the best in japan at it and then we've got a malaysian athlete there Vern, and then also alvin tan coming out of singapore very exciting to see uh and there's even more even more athletes i know that there i know the athletes that are registered um but there's even more top athletes from asia and from elsewhere um that will be added to this roster. They'll be competing April 6th and 7th. Super, super duper excited that uh, they'll be competing. But today, we are getting on to... Oh, 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 hold on. Let me make sure... Let me get the stupid browser bar out of the way. I don't want you to see what my first take is, though. Boop. Okay, awesome. So, today we are doing for Soapbox... Um, we do have to make it out to Taiwan for that, Billy. We absolutely do because this is such a, it's such a cool event. Um, I'll go to this corner for now. I would love to do it. I would love to be able to, to make it out there, but 10 Sasuke hot takes, and they're going to start off kind of chill, you know, less people are going to disagree with me about these first few takes, but as we get further down the line, the takes are going to get a little spicier. So be ready for that. Um, I'm going to move my camera over, actually, and probably for the last time, because I'm going to expand myself right there. Take number one, probably the chillest take out of all of them. We will talk about all of these takes for a little bit after. I will state my reasoning, and then we'll go into our normal discussion time for Soapbox, and then I'll dip on out when it's time for me to go to my concert. Take number one, there should not be a GOAT debate. It is Yusuke. Yusuke Morimoto is the GOAT of Sasuke. Um, I, I don't really think I need to defend this one, but there are some people out there who are like, well, you know, if Yusuke wins a third time, then he's the GOAT. False. He's already the GOAT. There are two records that matter in Sasuke, frankly. Besides, I mean, okay, three. Perfect attendance, which only Shingo has. Whatever. The two that matter... Most amount of times made it to the final stage. 
most amount of times won. The record for most amount of times on the final stage is Nagano and Yusuke. Most amount of times won is Yuji and Yusuke. Yusuke has them both. The others do not. Uh, I don't... Yeah, it, I'm going to move this over. I just realized the chat box is right there. Um, so, yeah. The GOAT debate effectively, to me, ended with Sasuke 38. I think the final nail in the coffin is Sasuke 40 because that's when he tied Nagano's record. Let's be real. The second he makes it over to the final stage again, which is likely to be in Sasuke 42... I mean, if there's anyone yapping about Nagano or Yuji being the GOAT after that, I do just genuinely believe is it's nostalgia. And I am a Nagano guy. Like, Nagano is my favorite of all time. I would say maybe he has more impact overall, but at the same time, you have to think that Yusuke, with his success, is likely defining an entire generation of Sasuke fans in Japan that we just don't know about because we're not from there. Because for the past decade, almost decade, it has been the Yusuke show, essentially. So, that is hot take number one. If anyone disagrees, your mom's a hoe. Number two. Stage two is the... Er, sorry, not stage two. Stage one is the worst take stage... Blah, I can't speak. Take number two. Stage one is the worst stage in Sasuke currently. I know everyone loves to hate on stage two. Everyone loves to bash on the backstream and how they never change it and blah, blah, blah. Stage one is worse. And I'll tell you why. For starters, um, the obstacles are not that difficult until the dragon glider, tackle, and warped wall. And the warped wall is only difficult because you do the tackle before it. The rest of them, it is running and jumping and not rushing. All right, and it, basically the people who fall before that, they have a mental lapse in coordination and timing. Like, as much as I enjoy Twin Diamond, I don't think Twin Diamonds are a bad obstacle, but is it a difficult obstacle? No. That, so that's just one reason. I, I think it's absolutely insane how easy 90%, not 90%, but like 70% of stage one is. Um... And in doing so, that drags out to my second point. It drags on stage one for such a long time. There's already 100 competitors. There's all these people that are coming in. And frankly, in any other era of Sasuke, joke competitors would not be making it to the fishbone. They would be falling on the first or second obstacle. But because nothing's ever changed, they're getting further and further in the course as more tournaments go on. Combine that with Inui's editing style, you have a two and a half hour stage one out of five hours. That is too long, in my opinion. Um, stage two, you can argue, yeah, it's more boring because the course hasn't changed for even longer. Sure, I'm not going to disagree. Like The course hasn't changed for longer. But you know what? At least we only have to sit through stage two for like 45 minutes, 50 minutes tops. Like Stage one, we have to sit through half of your Sasuke tournaments nowadays are stage one. That is atrocious pacing. Atrocious. So, in my opinion, stage one um, definitely needs to be changed. And you know what, Poke? You bring up a great point. The time limits are way too high. Well, you could be referring to stage one or stage two, but I agree to both. The time limit on stage one and stage two is very high. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all seem to be kind of on the same page about that. We're going to go into my third hot take, and this one's going to... I think this one will ruffle a couple of feathers, but maybe not as much. Number three, stage two is not bad. I just don't think stage two is bad. I think the time limit is too high, but I think the course itself is a good course. I think for starters, stage two is a sprint. You know, stage two has been since the very first Sasuke... It's been a speed stage. And so just because not a lot of people fail stage two to me doesn't mean that it can't be entertaining. If you watch the Paravi, you know, where they show every single, yo, what's up, Ohm? Thanks for subscribing. That's the first time in forever that that alert has ever been on. I think it's been months. So thank you, Ohm. Um, you can't stand having three time-wasting obstacles to end the stage. I understand that, but again, to me, stage two is 
the speed stage, it's the one where the clock should matter the most. So I think the placement of the obstacles, especially backstream, reverse conveyor, and wall lift, doing reverse conveyor and wall lift while soaking wet, definitely tough, especially going into backstream tired after sprinting through the first half of stage two, I think it's a good combo. I think the time limit is way too ridiculously high, like way too ridiculously high. But at the same time, the obstacles in terms of the way they're sequenced and what is meant to happen, they're good. If they adjust the time limit, stage two could, when the time limit is adjusted and proper adjustments are made to the course, stage two is good. Case in point, Sasuke 38, stage two was good. The time limit was all right. The rolling log was properly scaled in difficulty. It took out a lot of people and it had a lot of close runs. So yeah, I agree, Radium. Poland seven, yeah, it was a it wasn't a very brutal stage two, but it was still a good stage two. Um, yeah, we could cut spider drop. That's fine. I wouldn't even count forty. Forty didn't take out as many people. Like it took out half the field, but you have to think half the field were um, underqualified and inexperienced on stage two. Like when two of your victims are forty eight year old Kane Kasugi and Shingo Yamamoto who have not touched stage two in forever. Eh. Same thing about Sasuke 41. You took out six people. One of them was Shunsuke, who bowed out. Ryo, who his, let's be real, his results are a roulette wheel. And then two children. It's like, it's not, yeah. Um, yeah, is what it is. We'll go on to hot take number four. No amount of results can save bad editing. And this is specifically in reference to Sasuke 40, because... Everyone talks about how amazing the results are in Sasuke 40. And when I ask him, all right, give me some give me some good results. You know, they'll say Kane Kasugi on stage one, Shingo Yamamoto on stage one, and three people making the final. Okay. Are we just going to ignore the fact that stage two was like speed ran and really, really handled poorly? Or like... Half of stage one of that tournament was handled really, really poorly, like really badly, guys. Stage three was just jumping straight to the cliffhanger. And like Tata ended up getting digested on the final stage as well. There, I, I, This is in response to Sasuke 40 glazing, honestly. This is also in response to a conversation I had with my friend Evan, um, who, by the way, member of the Sasuke nerds and tomorrow... He will be dropping a video on TSN. It's a really cool video. Billy's editing it. Be sure to check it out tomorrow. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, Evan said like no amount of editing can save bad results. I can agree, but I'm going to flip that and say no amount of results can save bad editing. You could have amazing results. It could ruin your edit or it could just make your editing worse depending on how talented the editor is. And in the case of Masato Inui, he kind of dug himself into a hole with Sasuke 40 especially. So um yeah so that's hot take number four let's do it hot take oh hot take number five so this is where things are going to start to get spicy y'all are going to have a hard time with the ones coming up after this oh here we go number five the g4 cuts are better better than the tbs cuts i would rather watch g4 sasuke over tbs sasuke modern day hi ninja gamer welcome sorry for all of you guys who are joining at 4 30 by the way i know it's 4 15 uh that's when i started the stream and i know i made that announcement late so sorry about that but we're on hot take number five um the g4 cuts are better and the thing about g4 for me i know that they're flawed i know that the subtitles are inaccurate for 90% of them. I know that, you know, they will go out of order. They're not in numerical order, which we'll get to numbers later. There's a take about numbers here. Um, but as you guys are saying, they make bad tournaments better. They make bad tournaments watchable, 100%. Um, the pacing is just so much better. I would much rather, if, if you're able to condense 
saw like a five hour tournament like sasuke 24 sasuke 24 was still really good on g4 i'm gonna just say that i enjoyed it and it had really good results it was a five hour tournament and they shrunk that bad boy down and it's still an enjoyable watch so i think they do good with bad tournaments like 28 and 29 or 19 and 20 sorry to all the 19 defenders i hate sasuke 19 um but they also do really well with good tournaments i rewatched some of these good tournaments as well just so i knew what i was saying before i decided on this take the pacing is better i enjoy the graphics being there i enjoy that they're very quick to the point they don't drag out profile pieces like i'm sorry again i don't need to be sitting through the 15th fluff piece in a row about how hioki is a dad or how iwamoto is a musician or how yamada has retired over and over you know what i mean like we don't need that give me 20 seconds of that bang onto the run bang on in the next one it makes it so easy to get a little bit of background and a little bit of you know bonding with that competitor want it gives you enough to want to root for them you get subtitles that are eh just eh but it generally captures the picture most of the time um and then you get a run and it makes you feel a certain type of way and it makes you want to watch it again every single time the only thing that i will give i was talking to billy about this yesterday the only thing that i'll really give credit for for the um for the tbs cuts um the graphics are cool over there but even then like graphics on a japanese game show are kind of standard so that's just in general that's like saying i like the special effects in this superhero movie it's a superhero movie they're all gonna have special effects it's a japanese game show they're all gonna have graphics but I do really like the music in Sasuke. On the TBS versions, I love the music. The theme songs for all the competitors, great. Um, huh. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I've just I've watched the TBS cuts. I've watched Challenge. I've watched Guerrero, which is in Spanish. I've watched G4. I've watched Jet copies. I've watched all these, and it's like it's better. So that's just my take. Um, I'm not saying that the TBS cuts are bad. There are definitely some bad versions of the, like, bad TBS edited tournaments. Um, but in general, I don't hate on the TBS cuts. I'd say it's a solid second behind G4. On to hot take number six. <clears throat> they should forcefully retire competitors, a.k.a. they should stop casting people. I'll let the chat catch up here and say something uh, while I get some water. You agree and disagree. I like that. I like that. So here's the deal. <clears throat> I don't mean just like, oh, we're going to invite you for this one tournament, and if you didn't do good, we'll let you try again. But then if you don't do good a second time in a row, we're just not going to bring you back. I mean like big-name competitors. They need to stop being invited. Um, You feel like you would be filled with guilt. Yeah, so let me give you a list of people who I think should just not be invited anymore. Um, Hioki, Tomo, Suzuki, Kano, Shunsuke, um, Araki and Muto are kind of borderline right now. Isa, Yoshinori, when he comes back, I don't think he should. Um, there's a few others... There's a few others that like I could get and there's semantics and there's specifics, but those are like some general ones. And and let's let's get into it right now. June is borderline as well, but June showboating and Sasuke 41 kind of saves it for me. Like at least he, you know, at least he provided some entertainment in Sasuke 41. Um but before that he was on the list of just he shouldn't be. Um I wouldn't have brought back Keitaro until he until Sasuke 40. Like 
to me, when he cleared in Sasuke 39, I was like, about dang time. And on my, in my mind, I was like, don't bring him back. You don't need to bring him back. But then he cleared in Sasuke 39, and I was like, okay, bring him back. Let's see how he does. He made it to stage three again in Sasuke 40, and that's when I was like, okay, he proved he can do it consistently now. Now he's not on my list of people that we should get rid of. Um, Nagano should have stayed down and retired. I understand that he's back for his son. That's the only reason I'm okay with it. Only reason. Um... There are very few people that I think that they shouldn't just, like, they're, yeah, they should save. Here's why. For one, they give us the same results over and over, and they're getting older. And so it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Two, we know their stories. We, they're not going to provide anything new. Like I said, uh, Hiyoki's a dad. Tomo is a climber who has shoes. Um... June failed the cliffhanger over and over and over. You know what I mean? Like, Suzuki's old and he's a sensei. Like, things like that. Um, we don't need to watch that every single tournament. It, that, if anything, you add that with the fact that the course never changes. And it just really starts to feel a lot like um, a copy and paste. Even more. Ayano is on the list. But... I know that we kind of need more women in Sasuke, so it's like, eh. Um, Yamada should stop. Yeah, he should. He should really just sit into that coach role for the Black Tigers and be that mentor. It's perfect. Um, another reason to forcefully retire competitors, aka stop casting them, stop bringing them back. Inui already knows how he's going to edit them. Inui uh, has his favorites that he shows on screen all the time. He knows that he's bringing back all of these people just to not show them. Um, I think that's kind of stupid. I think it's kind of a slap in the face. He knows that they're not going to win. He knows they're not even going to make stage three most of the time. And he knows that he's going to give them 30 seconds of screen time in a five-hour broadcast. Kind of stupid, frankly. And number four... The only reason that I enjoyed Sasuke 41 was because of the breakout. Like, you know, I like the rookies or the unknowns coming in and making it to stage three. I like the breakout performances. Getting rid of those older people who have shown that they can't provide anything new to the results and replacing them with new people will provide some level of unpredictability to Sasuke. Because if you're not really going to change your course, you should change out your roster. Because that way you know you'll have some people staying who are, you know, big names. But then you'll have other people who are like going to throw in some surprises. Either shock fails or surprise breakouts. I think that would really add to the entertainment value of the show in general. The people who I think should stay. Yusuke, Yoshiyuki, Tada, Keitaro. They're the most likely people to win. So keep them there. Um... I'm not. Inc I'm including people who are like veterans, not like Mia Oka. I'm not bringing up Wasabi in this right now. I'm just bringing up the ones that should stay. Iwamoto, Darvish, Kajihara. Celebrities, they carry ratings. They do well. They care about the show. Shingo. Shingo should stay. Perfect attendance. You take that away. That is a tr like if you kicked Shingo off the show, I just would straight up not watch it. I normally don't let my nostalgia get in front of me, but if you kicked Shingo out of Sasuke, we'd have problems. Um, Rio is on my list. You can get rid of Rio. You could. The only reason that Rio is safe right now is because he is training partners with Kane Kasugi. Keep Saikawa. I'm fine with keeping Saikawa. That's fine. Kayu and Nakashima, keep them. Uh, keep some spots open for the Black Tigers. You know what I mean? Um... Keep Yuji. Yuji has become infinitely more likable in this modern era than he was in Shinsasuke. I I'm I wasn't really like sold on Yuji during Shinsasuke because he was inconsistent. Yuji is one of my favorite people to watch nowadays uh, because of his arc. You know what I mean? So keep Yuji. Um, cut Goto. I like that. Cut Goto. Uh, wouldn't keep Darvish because what will he do at this point for Sasuke except ratings? I think he might have, given his performance in, in 41, I think he could clear stage one still. I don't think he makes it past stage two, but I think stage one, 
is in the cards and that'll do good for ratings so keep him there um i'm trying to keep up with all the names that you guys put in the chat but besides that yeah the rest we can cut guys like we don't need them everyone's so attached to these competitors you don't have to be guys there's so many good competitors nowadays in this morimoto sadai era we got young guns coming up we've got new people coming in get more give us the new wave give us a new era a new generation for kids nowadays to grow up with more like give us that so what it's not for us you know so what it's not our generation our big names so what if it's not the all-stars of the shin Sedai? if sasuke stays stuck stuck in the past you know it's gonna get worse over and over and over it's just gonna consistently decline in quality because you're gonna have a bunch of dudes in their 60s trying to make it to stage three it's not gonna work um on to hot take number seven almost nothing is impressive in sasuke nowadays i say almost nothing i'll tell you the things that are impressive making it to the final winning beating the vertical limit burst simple as that um for a show that's been marketed for years as the world's toughest obstacle course the fact that it has not changed, um, it's rough. It's rough. I've, like I said in my review of Sasuke 41, and I think I said a little bit of it in my review of Sasuke 40, I don't feel impacted by any of these moments, any of these big clears, unless they're rookies. Because for me, it's like, oh, no wonder you cleared stage one. You've tried it six times in a row. You finally beat it on your sixth or seventh try. Like, and in the time it took for Shingo to clear this stage one, Yusuke won twice. Yusuke made the final four times, five times, before Shingo could clear stage one once. Before Ryo could get out of a slump, Yusuke had already been on the final stage of 35 and 36. Before Tomo got out of his slump. We got three finalists. Like, that's ridiculous. No wonder they're finally going to make it past. The course hasn't changed. It's their sixth or seventh time running the course. No wonder we're getting the same results. It's not impressive anymore because they know what to do. They train for it year in, year out. And that's like a great testament to their hard work, their work ethic and everything. But it's not impressive. It's not impressive. I genuinely do believe you have me train those things for three months, honestly. Just the Sasuke course for three months. And I'm making it to the cliffhanger dimension. I like 100% believe in that. So. Yeah, so that's that's hot take number seven. Um, fact that some competitors still failing the same obstacle over and over, yep, <laughs> is also impressive in a negative way. You think the only country that would even be close with Japan would be Poland? Even then, hard to say. It is hard to say. Um, you, the only way Yusuke is ever going to get caught up with any of this stuff is when he gets old. Simple as that. When he gets old. Old age is going gonna, is gonna to be what's going to stop Yusuke Morimoto. Um, see, I'm glad that everyone believes this. You Chat, you guys are in... This is why I say to share Soapbox with people. Let's share it to people who are not aware of this. Because every time I've said this take... I have been met with a lot of pushback. A lot of people have argued this with me on Discord, on Reddit, on whatever, where people are like, no, they're still doing... It's more impressive because they're old and they're making it that far. I don't care. Share this to those people. Let's. We're bringing up valid points. You guys are bringing up stuff in the chat. I'm bringing up stuff here. Like That's what Soapbox is meant to be. So if you know someone who will disagree with this or any of the hot takes here, Share this with them. 
let's get the conversation going. The goal of Soapbox is not just to share hot takes and start fights. The goal is to start a conversation and potentially change the way we view our show. So that way it's not just a bunch of, oh my gosh, I watched Sasuke in 2007. It was so cool. And it's like, no, nah, this is Ninja. This is Sasuke. Let's see what's going on. See if I like it or not. You know what I mean? Um, the vertical limit was impressive until NSC Phil Folsom. I'm dead. Um, I agree, Amber. I, I'm very impressed. That's why I was impressed by Kane Kasugi's run in Sasuke 40 as well. Because he came back after literally 20 years of not doing this. And then he still beat stage one. Like, that's really impressive. Really impressive. Um, Jonathan Bange making stage three is more impressive than Shingo clearing in 40. Disagree, because Jonathan Bange, um, he kind of got lucky with his opponent. Like, that just kind of happened. He, it was more of like an RNG thing, in my opinion. Um, he still did a good job on the course, of course, but yeah. All right. Number eight. Shin Sasuke is a weak era. I'm going to piss so many of you guys off with that. I, I'm going to piss off so many of you guys. <laughs> oh, man, my hair's a mess today. Got to take care of that. Bro, I'm seeing some very divisive opinions here. Oh my gosh, Shane <laughs> threatening to dox me. Um, so let's talk first about what I consider to be Shin Sasuke. Sasuke 18 to 27. I think everyone kind of thinks the same way. It's 18 to 27. I really, really, really love the really good tournaments in Shin Sasuke. Like when Shin Sasuke is at its best, it's some of the best Sasuke, period. Sasuke 23 is my number two tournament of all time. My number three is Sasuke 24. I also really, really like Sasuke uh, 18, and I really like Sasuke 25. I don't care about any of the other Shin Sasuke tournaments. Genuinely. Genuinely don't care. I think 19 is awful. Sorry to all of the defenders of 19. Um, 19 is ass. 19 is, is ass. 20, though. 20 is the worst Sasuke tournament of all time. Like, 100%, Sasuke 20 is the worst Sasuke tournament of all time. Um, 19, to me, 19 and 20 were the ones where, like, you watch it on G4 where everything's structured the same way in every tournament, and 19 and 20 are still unwatchable for me. They were hard for me to watch as a kid. And when I rewatched them now, I was like, no, it's hard to watch. So I don't like 19. I think 20 is the worst tournament of all time. 21, I think, is just mid. Like, it's just like low C tier, high D tier. 22, C tier, mid, mid, mid. 23 and 24 are goaded. 25 is pretty good. I think 26 is boring as heck. 26 is boring. Like, just genuinely just... Ugh. Um, uh, and then 27. 27, I think, is mid. I don't like 27 a whole lot. Um, credit to Yuji for winning. But... I don't like 27 a whole lot, and I think 27, especially for Western fans, I think 27 is largely carried by the fact that ANW3 happened. I don't know. I don't know. That's my thing. I think 27's not like, like the way I described it to Billy, Billy and I were talking about this. Sasuke 27 is like a low B tier, high C tier. I'd say high C tier. You take away A and W, like not you take away the American competitors. I mean like you take away the episodes of A and W that give you extra runs of Sasuke 27. You know what I mean? 
and you just take the TBS broadcast of Sasuke 27, I think you have what goes from a high C tier to a low C tier tournament. So, um, and in general, I am looking at the chat right now. I've got defenders for 27, 26, 19, 20, 21, 22. And then everyone kind of agrees 18, 23, 24, 25, all good. There are two signs if something is bad. Either one, if everyone agrees it's bad, or two, if you have to defend it tooth and nail that it's good to other people. And the fact that for almost all of Shin Sasuke, you guys are all divided and willing to battle for one specific tournament, but they're all different tournaments. That's raps. You guys just, you're all fighting a losing battle because you might say, you might convince someone that Sasuke 26 is good, but what about the other ones? Not, you're not choosing to defend those. So, um, yeah, so that's, Shin Sasuke is a weak era. Is it worse than the modern era? No. Definitely not, but it's still a weak era. You guys may win one battle every now and again, but you will not win the war. We are now down to hot take number nine, our second to last take. Sasuke should have died in 2011. I wish I had music, like playing villain music or something like that. Um... Sasuke should have died in 2011. And that is just, yeah. Yeah, there are people who are like, I understand, but I love that I have it. Frankly, let's look at what we got. 28 was bad, 29 was bad, 30 was bad, 31 was eh, 32 was bad, 33 was awful, 34 was bad, 35 was all right, it was pretty good. I like 35, I love 36. I like 37, 38 is all right. I hate 39, I don't like 40 a lot, and I hate 41. Like, it's been a decade, we've had 13 tournaments, and I've only liked four of them. Hindsight 2020, I would have been fine if we just ended with Sasuke 27. The, the way I see it, you guys are totally entitled to your opinions, you know? I see some people showing some love for Sasuke 30, Sasuke 35, you know? And I get it, because honestly, Sasuke 36 is in my top five tournaments of all time. I love Sasuke 36. But, if I went back in time and I told my younger self in 2012, you're going to watch Sasuke. It's not gone. You're going to continue watching it for a decade. But, get this. You're only going to like three of those tournaments. Maybe three. Three. I really only like 35, 36, and 37. You're going to like three of those 13 tournaments. Two of them are in the same year. One of them is the year after. And then, you know, the rest, you're just going to sit through pain. 11-year-old me would have said, I'm good. I'll stick to A&W, and I'll stick to whatever else happens. Uh, would I even be here without Sasuke past 2011? Yes, I would be. I would be. Um, because at that point, I was huge on A&W, and then I got into the spinoffs, which the spinoffs come from A&W, at least the ones in Europe. So, um, yes. All the international shows would exist today if Sasuke died after Sasuke 27, just not the ones in Asia. Um, let's see what this is saying. There are 33 defenders? Bruh. The community definitely would have not grown as much without, without the Sasuke rising era and everything, but... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm fine. Like, I'm good without Sasuke. Genuinely. 
especially the quality of Sasuke right now. A and W is the one that started the international spinoffs and made Ninja a global thing. You know, we get A and W because of Sasuke before two thousand eleven. A and W becomes a thing. It hits Europe and Australia and Israel. Some of the biggest, most popular, most successful shows in ninja history that have created some of the biggest ninja warrior superstars. Sasuke directly created spinoffs such as Sasuke Vietnam, which was bad. Sasuke Mongolia, which is one of the worst ninja shows in history. And Sasuke Indonesia, which was pretty good, but only survived for two seasons. So the impact very much lessened. Very much lessened. Um... So, that's my take, I guess. You've enjoyed Sasuke more in the past decade than you have A&W. It's not a hot take, but I strongly disagree. I think if you look at A&W from 2000, what are we in? 2014 to 2024, or 2013 to 2023, because that's when the last A&W season came out, I would genuinely take a and w 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 over sasuke 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 and 40 and 41 they just yeah i yeah i would i like a and w 12 I think A and W twelve would have been an amazing spinoff, and I think the only reason that people really, really hate A and W twelve is because it's called season twelve and it's not labeled as a spinoff. Genuinely, you vowed to never look at A and W in your life. Touch grass. There are many, many amazing moments in A and W, and I would say that there are more entertaining moments in a and w than in sasuke in recent years 100 percent. i i agree amber watch parties make sasuke more fun watching it with the homies you know that that definitely makes it feel like an event it makes it feel fun it's like you know when you sit down with your friends for the super bowl sasuke is the super bowl of ninja because it's once a year it's super long and you just hang out with your friends and you just watch something and eat food and talk to people um but does that mean it's good no let's be real the super bowl is not always very good so <laughs> um yeah so that's my take you guys are not ready for my final hot take this is going to be a big one Sasuke shouldn't have 100 competitors. They should lower it down to 50. This goes kind of in line with um, the part about forcefully retiring competitors. But also, they should just stop having 100 competitors. This is a fun one. I can tell like, all the Sasuke purists, you know, it's tradition. It's always been a hundred competitors. And um yeah, you're you're right, it is tradition, but it's a dumb tradition at this point. Let let's let's put it this way, all right? You've got a hundred competitors. You invite all these people. You look at the field of people, you've got celebrities that you're paying to show up. Because you pay the celebrities to show up, the comedians, the YouTubers. The pop stars, they're all getting paid to be on Sasuke. All right? But the only ones you really need are the ones that you're going to show on camera. Iwamoto, Darvish, Kajihara, Saikawa. Maybe Sugeta. The rest of them you don't need to pay. You know what that money could go towards? Other obstacles. Other obstacles. Something nice for the course every once in a while. All right? There's some joke competitors, and I think joke competitors add light. Someone just asked if we need Torisawa. 
Uh, some Joe competitors work. I think Tori Sawa works. I don't think you need 10 in a row the way we have it right now, especially when they take up all this extra screen time or they get cut entirely. And that's something that Amber just brought up, having, having to watch the Parabi cuts. The cut runs add basically nothing to the show themselves. Like, they're just kind of throwaway runs. Oh, that person just failed the fishbone. That person just failed rolling hill. It doesn't add much to the tournament, so save the money on booking those celebrities. Save the money on booking the time, whatever, you know. Eh. The other thing is in regards to the everyday people that they invite um, or the competitors that we think we want to see more of because they're going to do well, a.k.a. make it to stage three. What is the point if you were going to cut away to the same six people on camera all the time? Inui cuts away to reactions from Iwamoto, Darvish, Yamada, Kiyoki, occasionally Yusuke. So we know what we're getting into as soon as we turn on our TV, as soon as we put Sasuke on. So what's the point of filling all of that dead space with people who aren't going to get shown period why are you spending time and money on that and then the last thing and this one is just more so frustration um the sasuke trials and sasuke koshin people for two straight years now have had a combined screen time across both tournaments 40 and 41 of like five minutes you made a whole spectacle out of both of those specials especially trials which is five days long airing wise you know you stretch that out to five episodes for them to not get shown that's stupid that is a waste of resources genuinely um so in my opinion if you already know if, if we know inui inui already has his favorites we know how these competitors are going to do on the course because the course isn't going to change cut it down to 50 don't give us a five hour tournament of crap Instead of making stage one two and a half hours long, make it an hour and a half because then it justifies the reactions. The cutaways will fill that space while still allowing us to push through more of the field at a quicker rate instead of wasting our time with people that we're supposed to be getting attached to, we're getting told that we're supposed to care about, we're getting YouTube videos about people, and then we get nothing. Like... Koji Hashimoto was brought back in Sasuke 40. They made a whole YouTube video about how exciting it would be and how cool it is that he auditioned and whatever. And then he was shown for 10 seconds. And that was it. That was dumb. So to avoid that, and I'm not saying to avoid digest in general, but to avoid digest for people that he knows he's going to put on the cutting board already, just cut the field in half. 50 people. I'm going to be real. Kunoichi 9, 10, and 11. The pacing isn't bad. There's only 50 competitors. And he's got his favorites on that show. 100%. The pacing is not bad. People are going to, you know, you can argue anything you want about Kunoichi 9, 10, and 11. You could say that it's bad or whatever. What, blah. The pacing's not. It's really not. Um, and I think 50 competitors, they were kind of onto something there. So I don't think Sasuke, Sasuke should be 100 competitors anymore. Um, see, I would like for them to do that, Ninja Gamer. Uh, I know it scrolled away from the chat, but Ninja Gamer said, you know, keep 100 competitors, don't make a tournament five hours, make it shorter. And that makes sense. But we've had that before with Sasuke 33 all the way up until 38. And everyone was complaining about how they were cutting away to the celebrities for their reactions on things instead of showing the actual runs. And I think if you're showing half the amount of runs, it justifies the reaction time a bit more. It allows Inui's editing style to stay pretty much the same while we get only runs with substance. So everyone kind of wins. <laughs> Ninja Gamer, no, that's not how that works. Uh, Merite, this would be a hot take for you if you watched more Sasuke, but you don't. So, yeah. Or not as much, I think. 
I don't know. See, I don't think that would result in even worse editing. I think that would result in better editing because it would be over with quicker. Even if it's edited badly, at least I'd only be wanting to gouge my eyes out for three hours instead of five. Know what I mean? So. So, yeah, because like I was rewatching old school Sasuke, like I was rewatching Sasuke four this week and Sasuke four is an hour and a half long. He goes through all four stages that has the clear record. And I know that they cut some people. They don't show everybody, but they show more runs than Sasuke 41 did at some point, at least in full. And it ended in a winner. So it's like, it's doable. It's just not being done. If they do 50, it makes the competitor stagnation even worse because there's less room for more new competitors to break out. Um, There's potential for that to be a problem, yeah. I could see that. Uh, but also, mm, I don't know how to describe it. I think it would force Inui to be more selective. You know what I mean? I th that's what I'm trying to say. I think it would allow... Like, everyone's talking about Fua Chan's run would have to be in full or whatever. No, I mean, like, if it's shorter and he knows that he's got his celebrities that he definitely wants, like Iwamoto and Kajihara and all them, and they're going to do good, spend their money on them. And don't spend your money on Fua Chan. Easy. Simple as that. Like, that's, that's the simple problem and solution. And it's going to force him to be more selective with people. Oh, we don't have space for new competitors to come in maybe it's time to start cutting some of the old ones bye shunsuke bye kano it starts with them bye suzuki and then eventually it'll become when they get older by tomo by rio by hiyoki you know when they get older and they're ready to go you know so Oh, absolutely, Amber. It 100% it has to be. But, yeah, so those are my 10 Sasuke hot takes. Uh, I have about, like, five minutes before I need to head out. So does anybody have any final thoughts? I agree, Om. Very easy to get rid of the uh, fluff pieces, but that's never happening, unfortunately. Split Sasuke in two episodes. I don't really want that. Oh, wait, I do, because the G4 cuts are better. Who's my favorite rapper? Are you going to ask me about the Kendrick... The Kendrick verse that dropped, because that was crazy. Um, I don't really have a favorite rapper. I kind of have a favorite rapper, but we'll talk about that later. Like, you can DM me about that. Yes, he did. Oh, man. Shortest soapbox, or one of the shortest soapboxes. I think it's also because we all kind of were discussing as I was going through the slides. So there's not much to... Yeah. Uh, who am I seeing later? They're called I Don't Know How, But They Found Me. And we're going to leave in like 20 minutes. We're going to drive out to the to the venue for that. Sasuke 12 is the worst G4. It's not It's not amazing. I don't know if it's the worst G4. It might be. No, I could see that. I could see that. 
See, I don't really have a problem with that because it's super quick. Yeah, like the music and the fluff pieces, they're just really like, you, you get them, it's like 20 seconds of a 20 minute episode, not, you know, a five hour thing. So it's not an, it's not long enough for me to really like consider it a flaw that it's the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, this was the first time Soapbox didn't get off topic because, I mean, the whole point was kind of to derail everybody. Like, that was the object of this episode. Get people to talk. And so whenever there was a conversation to be had, we had it. Which, I think that worked. I'm definitely going to do a 10 A&W hot takes one eventually. Um, but I do have a special episode saved. I'm not sure, um, uh, something about Ninja Leaks. Very funny, very funny. Um, I'm going to do a special episode, like a special topic and maybe like make it look fancier. I don't know yet. Should I do that next month for episode 10 or episode 12? which is going to be the one year anniversary. <laughs> I love that you guys are still upset about the Shinsasuke one. I stand by it. I'm not doing both. I'm not, I don't have the time to put effort into two specials in three months. That's all right, we'll save it for 12. Shane said 12. We'll save it for the one year anniversary. I don't know if there's enough international ninja hot takes. Well, I, there, I could definitely make 10 international ninja hot takes. But I just don't think anyone really cares, Poke, frankly. That's the sad thing. Like, Unless you guys want to sit through that, I would 100% love You know me. I'm, I'm going to talk about all the ninja shows around the world anytime I get the chance. But um, I already have roast for Ninja Roast 3. So you just have to be patient, Nerte. It should die. Or, that's not a hot take. We were all kind of waiting for A&W to die. Um, yeah. It had a good run. It did have a good run. And now it's just kind of like, uh, is it going to die anytime soon? I don't think so. Um, I think the ratings are too high. Like the ratings are getting worse for them, but it's still like the number one or number two show on Monday nights. So they're not going to get rid of it anytime soon. <sighs> Ninja Warrior Netherlands, that's crazy. Um, I don't have it on my computer, but I have it on my phone. I was going to do Ninja Rose 3 last year, and I just never got around to recording anything or editing anything. Um, let me see if I can find it. But when I went to Worlds, I met up with my homie Bo. And for those of you who don't know Bo, he's a, he was a former member of the Sasuke Nerds. He competed at Worlds. So we met up in real life for the first time, and... We decided to do a UNAA roast. And so there's a... Oh, wait. Hold up, hold up. I didn't even turn the sound on, did I? I gotta turn up the volume. What's the other's name? Bob Clark. Hey, Bob Clark. Have you ever invested in some of these? Like, just dumb stuff like that. Oh gosh. Hey UNAA, this is how you do a world championship. Hey UNAA, this is how you keep your kids safe. Stuff like that. just dumb stuff. Like we were just roasting um, UNAA because they can be dumb. But ah, right, it's time to get ready and go and listen to some sweet sweet music.
Um, I don't, I've never found it. Uh, but I do know the version that you're referring to, Ohm. But I have not found tapes of it at all. Sorry. All right. Chat is off camera, so we're gonna... Uh, bye guys, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.